In this video, I want to bring up an issue that I see all too often when consulting networks. The issue, plain and simply, is too much Wi-Fi coverage. Believe it or not, this is an issue. If a client sees too many access points or networks at negative 67 dBm or higher, it can get really confused. I recently visited our computer science department here in downtown Boise and found a great example of this. I enter the building, walk up the stairs, and immediately find an access point on the ceiling, broadcasting this Bronco Guest SSID. I use Insider to dive into the network details by clicking on the binoculars icon. I can see that my laptop immediately associates to this radio labeled CS245, based on the chain link icon here. Then I look at the signal strength column and notice a pretty big red flag in Wi-Fi. In this one area, I see maybe 10 to 15 radios broadcasting at negative 67 dBm or better. Let's pause here to take a look at our acceptable signal strength graph from the MetaGeek website. Negative 30 dBm means you're basically on top of an access point, but that doesn't mean you should strive for this high of a signal strength. And anywhere in between that and negative 67 dBm is considered to be a very good signal strength. As soon as you start dropping to about negative 70 to negative 80 dBm, Wi-Fi will get a little more spotty and a client device will begin looking for a new access point to roam to. So as you can see, there are about 10 to 15 radios that are perfectly acceptable to associate to at this point, but my laptop really only needs one. Any one of these radios would provide exceptional Wi-Fi. As I walk farther away from the 245 radio, I'm passing many access points in the ceiling that really don't need to be there. Not only are they a waste of money, but they'll actually create more Wi-Fi issues by causing intermittent roams, which I'll demonstrate later. After walking a bit, my laptop finally chooses to reassociate to radio 242, and things start to get confusing. I walk upstairs to the third floor, where radios are clearly labeled in the 300s, and find that I'm still associated to the 242 radio on the second floor. Why? because my laptop is still seeing a decent signal strength at around negative 66 dBm or so. My laptop isn't really looking for a roam, and it's still happy with the radio from the floor below me. After walking a bit further, my laptop finally reassociates to a radio on the third floor. Since there are so many viable options, it doesn't even choose the closest radio. At this point, my laptop is getting so confused that it even jumps back to the radio on the second floor that it was previously associated to. I walk outside to a nice terrace and my laptop still doesn't know which radio to associate to because it's completely inundated with options. Finally, it reassociates to the 320 radio on the third floor, which again, isn't even the closest radio. This constant associating and reassociating to new radios causes dropouts and connection issues. If I were on a video call during this walk around, it probably would have gotten dropped. Also, keep in mind that I'm using a very capable wireless network adapter. In fact, it's one of the best adapters on the market, and it's even struggling to know where and when to roam. Clients with cheaper Wi-Fi chipsets like RF scanners or old Android devices will just absolutely struggle in an environment like this and tend to stick to an AP, which we call sticky client. To really fix a problem on this scale, the network admin team here would need to either turn down the output power on some of these radios, turn some off entirely, or a combination of those two things. It's important to think about each radio as a coverage cell, and you don't want too much overlap from the coverage cells of other radios. While it's important to have at least negative 67 dBm or better signal strength, you only want that coverage from one clear and containing access point or radio. It will not only save you time and money, but will also improve the client roaming on the network. For more information, visit www.metageek.com.